Hello and welcome to another episode of the Super Soul Model Series. I'm here with Qigong and acupuncturist expert Nick Havenkamp. Uh, Nick, welcome back to the show. Thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, great to have you here and great to tap into your wisdom and knowledge. Um, how are you, my friend? You okay? Yeah, very good. Thank you. I'm very excited to be on the show again. Thank you for having me, Jake. We had, a, we, had a, we had a great talk last time and lots of people wrote in and were, you know, so thankful for the uh, information that you were sharing on Qigong and, you know, people were super interested because it's nice to see it from uh, another perspective, another person's point of view. And of course, you've got so much experience, um, you know, but this week on this show, on this episode, you know, we're talking about acupuncture. Um, how did you get into acupuncture? What, you know? You know, what's your story? What's your backstory before you know, tapping into some of your wisdom here? How did you get into it? Yeah, I mean, we could go back all the way back when I was a small child, when I was going to Bruce Lee, right? He was a big role model for me. And that gave me this Asian influence back then when I was like eight, nine years old. I thought I was interested in Asian culture. And later on in life, um, when I was 18, I started with Qigong. And then when I was like 28, I went into and learned holistic medicine. And it was natural for me to actually go into traditional Chinese medicine, right? Which is a very complementary part to Qigong. So acupuncture, it's a ancient, ancient Chinese healing method, right? So it dates back over 2,500 years in China and it was developed by Taoists, okay? And so was Qigong. They were actually both, they belonged both together, so to speak. So for me, it was only natural to then have a clinic and offer both Qigong and acupuncture to my patients. It's quite interesting because I, I, I've, you know, looked at some clinics, you know, uh, in particularly in London, you can see like old you know, Chinese shops with, um, with traditional Chinese medicine, which is interesting, but they don't necessarily have like, I haven't seen them offer Qigong as well as, um, acupuncture so uh, i'm fascinated that you've chosen to take you know two powers principles and bring them together and try and turn it into some using ancient philosophies for like modern you know modern healing methods um would you say acupuncture is still like an alternative medicine or would you say that it's um you know a bit more widely accepted what's your, what's your interpretation yeah, it's in the Western world, or in Germany at least, it's seen as an alternative medicine. Okay. In China, it is a, definitely is a medicine. For them, for the Chinese, it is a valid, totally valid uh, medical system. Um, actually, in China, they use both the Western and the Chinese medicine in conjunction, and they have phenomenal results. Uh, in the Western world, um, more and more doctors, I think, they are realizing that there is a very big potential to actually combine both and not to have these two separate medical systems yeah you know? so i think in the west we're slowly coming around to this idea that chinese medicine is a very valid form of healing or of uh preventing uh sickness yeah so i mean yeah. I, I'm all about prevention rather than cure. I know cure is almost like the last thing before you, you, you know, you're able to turn it around. But if you can do things to help you, you know, stay healthy, stay well, uh, you know, like a fine tuning process, you know, like our car, our, our, our bodies being like a vehicle and keep it getting serviced regularly. Um, yes. And, I'm a, and I, <laughs> that's the, you know, that's my interpretation of it. So, um, uh, and I, I, I personally love the idea of infusing Eastern philosophy and Eastern medicine with Western medicine and bringing the two together because I think that there is, you can see, um, you can see much more um, available options to help people and you've got to see where people are at, what, what could help to, to help create more healing and harmony within the body and mind. So fascinating. So what, what is acupuncture, uh, Nick? You know, if, if you're a beginner, uh, you know, listening in and you're thinking, well, I've seen some shops, uh, you know, I've seen some t uh, traditional Chinese medicine shops. Um, um, but what is it, you know, what's your interpretation of acupuncture? Well, I mean, acupuncture, it's, it's basically, it's um, where you use different needle, needles to open up uh, energy pathways, which are blocked 
in our system. So for someone who has never maybe thought about this, you could imagine your body, your whole body, is uh, consists of a lot of blood vessels okay, and energetic pathways, meridians, and these get blocked over time. Okay, so this is a kind of a picture that we could draw. We have a blockage in some parts of the bodies and then we have emotional disturbances or we have a lot of thoughts or we have pain or anxiety. So the body um, lets us know, hey, there's a problem. And then we can go to an acupuncturist who through the diagnostic tools that TCM practitioners have, they can then locate, okay, these are the best points to insert the needle to uh, disperse the blockage, which is preventing a smooth flow of energy. Okay, I like that. Um... One way I think, I guess I've interpreted it is um, that imagine the body's energy, the inner energy flowing around your body. You know, the more warmth that you have in your, in your body, for instance, it's like a river. Um, yeah. And, and the river is the always flowing, but if there's a blockage, it's like someone's put a big boulder in the way. And acupuncture, when the practitioner is able to insert the needle, such as your good self, um, and we'll talk about my experience with you um, in a little bit in, in a little moment is able to remove those boulders or blockages so that that river starts flowing beautifully again and powerfully as it's meant to you know water has its own way of flowing and the end the body of um, in our, within our body system in our body matrix knows where it's supposed to go but if there is a blockage it's like someone putting a big boulder in the way Yes, that's a really good analogy. It's perfect. Yeah, that's what we do. We insert the needle, and then in acupuncture, you can, of course, insert the needle to different depths. So, for example, just a small example, we have the Wei Qi, which is just uh, below our skin. Okay, this is this is our outer defense, so to speak, to prevent uh, viruses and bacteria from externally entering our body. Okay, and when they enter, we can do a superficial acupuncture strengthening the weight sheet, for example, right? And then when they, if the bacteria or the evil enters further into the body, then we needle further deeper into the body, okay? So it's just based on, on, on the depth of the um, insertion of a needle. Uh, can, yes. Can you change the flow of energy, is that what you're saying in, in the body? Yeah, you, well, you can, um, you can influence the energy at different parts, uh, depths of the body. So okay. someone who has uh, some problems with the bones, you would want to actually treat the bone. So the needle would slide along the bone or touch the bone. And this is bone treating bone, okay. uh, for example. Now, the, the first thing that comes to mind the way we're having this conversation is, God, that sounds painful. Um, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my God, that sounds painful. Um, but I, you know, I've recently had a, an acupuncture session with you, uh, Nick, and absolutely amazing. And I've had it probably, I'll probably say in the last 20 years, I've probably had about, not a lot, but probably about 10 sessions of acupuncture. But the last one I had with you was, was really profound because I, I went into a deep uh, state of relaxation. Um, but, you know, the, I'd like to just quickly drop back to the pain on the needles, you know. Is it painful to have the needles inserted? You know, I, I can say my own experience, but you know, what, what's usually your, the, your clientele, you know, your customers, what, what's the experience? You know, how do you deal with that, that kind of thing? Yes, I mean, okay, there are points that are more painful than other points. Okay, that's one thing. So for example, if you're doing some acupuncture on the foot, on the uh, sole of the foot, that can be very painful or on the toe, that can be painful. And of course, I would warn the patient beforehand, be like, hey, this might be painful, not necessarily, but could be painful. And then of course, it's the thickness of the needle. So for example, if you have a very uh, well-built person, a man paper, for example, but they have a very strong body, for this person, I would use a thicker needle, thicker gauge needle, okay? If I have a very frail person, I would use a thinner needle, and some people are more susceptible to pain. But most of the pain actually is experienced in the epidermis, so that's the skin. So if you are able to do a very quick insertion through the skin layers, 
then the pain is gone. Some patients may experience some pain. Uh, and you can, when you do the insertion of the needle, you always watch the eyes of the patient to see okay, if they start blinking, then you know, uh -huh, okay, so I might have hit um, a artery or some, or some vein, you know, maybe, and then you could take it out a bit and reposition it. I mean, you can, you have to also see how the pa patient's reacting. Is, it, is, that, is that dangerous, you know, if you, no. like if you hit an artery, that's dangerous, you know what I mean, that's my interpretation. Um, actually, there are some, in some cases, you actually want to hit, right, you want to hit the artery, you want to bleed, um, but that's, that's certain pathological cases. It's not dangerous because these needles are very, very thin. <clears throat> and of course, it can be dangerous if you hit like a main artery like wrong here, then it's, uh, you, you shouldn't be hitting these arteries at all. So I'm talking more about um, veins and arteries on the extremities. Okay. okay, so not the neck and also acupuncturing here, the lung area, just be very careful, you do superficial acupuncture because you might puncture the lung. So this happens to practitioners who are not careful. So, I mean, you, you've got to be a highly skilled practitioner to, to be able to insert these needles full stop. So anyone looking for acupuncture, do your research so you find the right yeah. person. Uh, yeah. and because, you know, you, you want someone with great experience. Because not to say that it could cause, like, serious damage, but, you know, I think it's finding your right practitioner is everything. That's my experience. When, when I had my ex, um, acupuncture session with you, Nick, probably a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, I found that after the, the, the needles insertion was very quick and very harmless. Um, but afterwards, I felt such a deep sense of like relaxation. And then that evening, I slept incredibly deeply. Um, I didn't know if I had noticed that there was anything majorly different. It was just this like deep sleeping and, and then just this, this real the essence of calm that I felt mm. after the session. Um, can yeah, you explain yeah. a little bit about that and maybe what the effects are and maybe what's going on inside of the body, maybe what's going on inside of my body, just mm -hmm. as a result of that session that I had with you? Yes, the, so the session we did, I, I gave you a, a balancing acupuncture uh, treatment. So this was to actually pull energy from the upper body down to the lower body and to increase the circulation. Um, so a lot of us are in uh, living in a st stress mode, okay, and this acupuncture session took out a lot of the uh, stress, you could say, and then a lot of patients do experience this deep relaxation, and they're able to sleep better. It's basically this acupuncture session I did with you was just to balance your whole energetic body out, to just give you a kickstart, so to speak. Nice, nice. Well, I definitely felt super chilled afterwards and I slept very deeply that evening. So that's great. So I can't really tell what the benefits of what's happened to my body straight away. But I do feel that that relaxation helps reset the body in some possible way. What are the benefits like of acupuncture? What's it actually doing on the whole? I mean, we've talked about that it's allowing the, the energy to flow, but what's it actually doing for the body, mind and soul, so to speak? Yeah, that's, I mean, those are the key words, body, mind and soul or spirit, right? Uh, so with acupuncture, you can, so uh, with, you can help to bring the Shen or the uh, spirit back into the body. In our modern society, a lot of people, they are always thinking about tomorrow or yesterday. Uh, they're not, they don't have their thoughts in their body. They're not listening to the body. So with acupuncture, we can actually bring the mind or the spirit back into the body, which has a very great curative effect. Yeah. Uh, when, when you, so it's like, it's like when your mind is, in, is at home, then external pathogens cannot come in, so to speak. You know, it's, you, you become much more resilient. And so this is one form of how acupuncture can help uh, to bring people back into the body. But also, for example, I, ha I have patients with super high blood pressure and I give them uh, three treatments. So even after one treatment, the one patient was telling me, I mean, I could see the face totally changed, big smile, much more relaxed, no more tension. Um, so with acupuncture, you can actually lower the blood pressure. You know, you can just bring back a better balance. Also, uh, 
talking to um, other professors that I've, uh, sp I've studied with uh, in acupuncture oncology. Uh, there, like in China, it's often used in combination. You, you have your radiotherapy plus acupuncture, and of course, you take the herbal medicines also for herbs. And these patients, they um, they have a much much longer life expectancy. They don't have this uh, five year life expectancy, but it goes up to 10, 15, 20 years just through having regular acupuncture sessions and then also taking these Chinese herbs. It's um, so it's a very powerful tool. Said the least. Well, you were talking about your clients, Nick, and I, I'm always fascinated because, you know, it's people's success stories that we can try, you know, at least give us that belief to think, golly, this is actually really something I need to check out. So can you give us any examples of like any particular case studies? You know, you talked about after one day with a high blood pressure of your, your clients. Have mm -hmm. you had any other clients? I mean, obviously don't reveal their names. Obviously, that's always private. Is there, yeah. is there is there something perhaps like with a client that you've had an experience with and they've managed, you know, through one or two or three or, you know, a few sessions with you, you know, what, what's turned for them? Because that, that's always interesting for, you know, uh, someone new to, new to understanding acupuncture, what it can bring. Yeah. And what it can do. So, so I had one client, for example, uh, she just uh, was very tense and you could, you could see her body was very, uh, bloated so all the water was stuck in the body um so i mean i, I told her i told her that oh you have a very big water body which means you're taking your problems from other people but uh, you, you cannot distance yourself from other people so through creating a big water body you are able to absorb all these problems in your life and deal with it that way and uh, she was coming to this breaking point and then through several acupuncture sessions she has totally changed and so i had two sessions with her and then i saw it three weeks later and um her body had become yeah, she'd lost a lot of weight and she looked so relaxed and happy and i was like wow this is amazing and of course it's not only the acupuncture the acupuncture helped her to get to this point uh, but it's also her willingness to work on herself to recognize situations, the situation she's in. You know, it's it's always a two-way system. You cannot just go to the acupuncturist and be like, yeah, or to any treatment, be like, yeah, heal me. If your mind and body isn't really ready for it, if you're not learning your lessons, then uh, you're gonna have less success or it's gonna take much longer time. I'm uh, fascinated, like after two weeks, you know, she she'd um she'd had a little transformation and that must be yeah. very satisfying for you being able to be yeah. a, like a uh, channel for healing a channel for creating more happiness in someone else's life i mean is that is that yeah. like some of the best rewards you get being as an acupuncturist i mean it sounds pretty good to me yes i mean it's, of course it's a it's a great reward and also when you have instant feedback so like for example i had another patient with a severe frontal headache and i just um stuck in two needles and where did you put boom, them in your head? The was gone. <laughs> no, actually, no, no, uh, the thumb. Okay. Yeah, because so, okay. yeah, the thumb actually um, correlates to the brain. Right? And so I uh, chose specific points on, on the thumb. And so then the frontal headache was gone, like within that uh, really fast, really fast. And that was a very satisfying to be, to see like, okay, this treatment has really taken effect. And you can see like, or you have like another patient with carpal tunnel and, and uh, you, you insert the needle at certain points in the body and then you stimulate the needle and then the patient is turning and then they're like, oh, the pain's gone. Oh, wow, it's gone now. So you can have very fast results. So would you say like acupuncture is more, does it help the emotional body as well? Or, you know, is it emotional first? I mean, w when you're inserting the needles, is, is that touching the emotional body? Because if you look at like yeah. some Eastern philosophy from what I've read, is there's obviously the physical body, there's the emotional body, and there's the spiritual body. And the emotions is what gets stored in the body. So you're thinking, and if it's like disruptive thinking, like negative thinking, it gets stored in the body. And if you have positive thinking, that too gets stored in the body. This is like my research and my understanding. So the happier you are, the happier your body becomes, essentially. Yeah. But that's not to say that there aren't still a few challenges that you might find inside, your, inside of your body. 
it, does acupuncture touch the emotional body? You know, or is it? Yeah, I know. Obviously, it pierces the physical body, but is it doing that as well, the emotional body? Yes. Yeah, it can it definitely can. It, um, it can bring, like I was saying before, it can bring the shen back into the body, and then you are more aware of your emotions. What's and going the shen, on? It, the shen is the soul of your body. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the soul, the spirit. The, the spirit. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so I've seen, for example, um, patients, they come in and you look at their eyes and they have, see, oh, they have an old fear in the eyes, you know, fear yeah. that has not been resolved. And then within one acupuncture session, you can see that fear has it's left their fear. eyes. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and they, I mean, so something has been resolved within the body. And some blockage has been opened. And then the fear was able to, this person was able to let go of the fear. Uh, a fear is traditionally stored in the kidneys. In the kidneys. Yeah, yeah so each organ is stored. Yeah, each organ stores different uh, emotions. And yeah, so, I mean, this is all part of the, our diagnostic tools that we have in acupuncture. So uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, right? So we take the pulse and we use six fingers on the on the arteries on both wrists to just to feel the pulse which um, re relates to the different organs in the body and then we look at the tongue and then we can see okay does this person have a an excess or deficiency um, yeah, um, do they have too much and then through the diagnostic questioning you can see okay is there too much cold or is there too much wind too much heat you know and, and this is how you can then paint inside the picture to find out okay i need to uh, maybe strengthen the fire you know or so i need to um add strengthen the wood to build more fire so to speak right so you okay. uh, strengthen the liver yeah and this so is where the, the eastern philosophy the eastern um understanding of the medicine becomes quite interesting because it's elemental and they're seeing the body as different elements or containing different elements a bit like yoga as well they do that as well in the indian uh yogic system but in the West, we don't do that at all. You know, it's completely different. So it's nice yeah. to see, like, nature, you know, the Eastern philosophy, which feels very much like nature, and then the Western philosophy is, let, you know, let me, let me use these wonderful new drugs to, to be able to help the body heal in another way. Um, but fascinating, and I love the blend of the two. I think that there's real power to it, but I really do lean towards more natural things because, I, you know, Having spent so much time in nature, I just keep on thinking that, um, you know, human beings, we are nature, we are part of nature, we coexist with yeah. nature, but because we often live in cities these days and, um, you know, you can lose touch with that natural side of yourself. And, you know, my take is, I mean, again, it's just my perspective, is that years ago, the ancient sages or, or, of China and India and, and all over the world for that matter, Native American Indians, Aborigines, everybody had, and all these different diverse cultures, all of them had this connection with nature. I feel like we've lost, but we're starting to understand how powerful it truly is and that we can tap into it. And I love these sort of, uh, you know, I love acupuncture. I just think it's so clever that, you know they were able to come up with this and and that it actually brings harmony and happiness back into the body again um nick would you say that like any drawbacks or any sort of negatives with acupuncture um that, that that's, i think that would be quite interesting for a new person to to you know question so really there are no drawbacks okay if the acupuncturist knows what um he or she is doing then there are no drawbacks um so, like, maybe what I've, what I've experienced is that a patient might fall asleep, but that's not a drawback, really, right? They're just relaxing. Their body's getting back what it needs. Um, a danger could be a, an acupuncturist makes a mistake and punctures the lung, maybe, or maybe inserts a needle where they shouldn't. There, there are certain points that you should not needle during pregnancy, right? So you could induce labor. So, I mean, but the, acu the acupuncturist knows this, and so there really is not much danger. It's probably because the, the, the pins are so tiny. That yeah, they're so they tiny and, and the punctures were trained. Yeah, they were, they were trained and, and they know, okay, which points 
shouldn't be done in certain situations. Do you so, ever to console a patient to let them know that I'm going to put the needle in here, or is the practice, you know, the way that you do it, are you just very quick and it's far quick and harmless? Yeah, if, it, if it's a, a painful point, I will let them know. I don't want to, to surprise them. And I'd say this could be painful. Okay. Um, so, like on the sole of the foot, for example, there's a painful point or the ends of the feet. So, I don't, I don't want to surprise the patient. You know, I'd, I'd like to warn them, like, yeah, this could be painful, and then, and then often they do they do not experience as as that painful. And often I have had patients that are extremely sensitive, and they're like, okay, okay, uh, have you inserted the needle yet? And they're so tense. I'm like, yeah, it's in there already. You know, so so but often people don't even notice. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just it's like, how you experience it, isn't it? Really, that's interesting. Yeah, and also building up the trust with the patient. You yeah. have to be really honest with them and tell them, okay, hey, this is uh, this is not going to hurt or shouldn't. And also, always, always watching the patient, okay? Are their eyes moving? Are they twitching? Whatever. Uh, so, and then you can always tell, okay, if they are in discomfort. And some, at some point, when you give really strong stimulation and there is discomfort, it's okay. You know, it's better to have a little discomfort for... 10, 15 seconds while doing strong stimulation, then the treatment not working at all. Yeah. So it's um, it's a give and take, so to speak. Absolutely, Nick. When I met you in person and and, and saw you, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, what strikes me when I meet you is you've got like a really clear energy. Is there like, do you do acupuncture on yourself, or is that you know, you know, do, yeah, do you do acupuncture on yourself? Yes. Yeah, I do. Um, sometimes I do acupuncture on myself. Like for example. Uh, if I notice, like in the spring, I notice allergies coming up, then I would do the acupuncture on myself. Or I notice my uh, behavior was, was becoming very explosive, so I could feel the liver fire was becoming too strong. I would acupuncture myself to, and then I could feel all the warmth um, just leaving the body. So, I mean, yeah, I, I treat myself, but I, I mainly use uh, Qigong actually to stay in balance. It's, um, my main tool myself. So would you say like acupuncture, so how does, if Qigong is helping you, is that helping you relax? What, what's that doing in comparison with acupuncture? What, what, what are they both doing that's different? Yeah, so Qigong actually helps me to, or in general, it helps a person to first of all restructure the body from the inside out. Okay, so a lot of people have a uh, bad posture due to sitting in front of PCs and the, the work they do. And then with the Qigong, you can, re, uh, you can correct the posture. And in Qigong, you learn how to let go of all the inner tensions. Right? You, let go, you learn how to relax from the inside out. Because you always, in Qigong, you always want to be really relaxed, totally relaxed. Right? But so you, you train the very deep muscles and not the big outer muscles, which you do with weight training, right? So other forms of exercise, you, you're training the muscles on the outside. In Qigong, you actually train the small uh, muscles, really deep muscles, yeah, and the attachments to the muscles, which you're strengthening. Okay, so, and, and then, so how does that differ to the acupuncture? So if you're, if you're helping the energy from the inside out with the acupuncture, uh, with the Qigong, how does that differ to the acupuncture then? Yeah, well, with acupuncture, usually you have someone else is doing it for you, uh, and you're not improving the structure of your body, right? You're not you are opening the channels, the meridians with the needles, okay? And with qigong, you're actually opening the meridians and your whole uh, blood system through yourself, through standing in certain positions, through um, having your mind in certain areas, through certain hand movements. You can then influence the movement of energy you know in the for the kidney or for the liver for the heart depending what you want to do um nick uh, what what strikes me is really fun man and this is where you know we enter the personal a little bit um you know you're a dad you're a husband you're a dad of four little boys <laughs> you know, that's a proper hard task sebastian was he five is he or six He's six, yeah. Six, yeah. And Christian's only five or something like that as well. Yeah, four, yeah. of energy, and then you've got uh, Cornelius, who's two, and and then you know um, Antonio, who's just only a few months old. How do you keep the the boys 
in check? Do you give them acupuncture? You know, what, what are you doing to make sure that there is an element of still of joy in the house, but you know, calm when you need it? Uh, do you ever tap into your qigong or tap into your acupuncture to help settle boys, yeah. little ones down? Yes, um, I mean, okay, I've, I've used acupuncture a couple of times only, but very, very short sessions. So my eldest son, he had um, a lot of nightmares. He'd wake up, he couldn't sleep by himself. So I, um, I basically took the fear out through acupuncture. Um, so I just needed two points briefly, and then he was able to sleep, no problem for a couple of months. Did you put needles and, in, or were you touching it with your thumb? You know, what, what? No, I, I put needles in. And he's a very sensitive boy, and it was no problem, right? Uh, so, uh, but that also taught him um, um, breathing, and uh, so some visualization patterns to um, take the fear out. Um, and and also, he, I do, he's six years old. How did he? How did he? You know, process that information? Do you know? Yeah, he loved it. They, they take, they take it like it's natural, you know, because I mean, they're, they're small children. They, um, they don't have they're like a clean slate so to speak so when i did like the animal frolics which is a form of qigong you know where you imitate the animals and they loved it they loved the monkey you know yeah. and they were also doing the monkey you know and so yeah it's great oh. it's great to have a, a a dad who's a practitioner in this way which is health and healing so that they get to grow up in this environment um that's really super interesting you know from an observer's point of view from an outsider's point of view so uh, watch this space with the little boys, isn't it, really, as they grow yeah. up? It's going to be fascinating. Exactly. So in the bigger picture of everything, Nick, you know, what, what's acupuncture doing? You know, what's your message that you're sharing? I know you, you've got the practice in Germany, but, you know, in the bigger picture wise, how, how do you think your acupuncture and your qigong is making an impact? And, you know, what's your intent for it? Because I know we had this conversation and I think that's really nice to share here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's for the... So my intention is to uh, raise the vibration of the people around me. And so people who come in for treatments, usually they are able to come more in harmony with themselves, which will then affect the world around them, right? So, and that they become more in touch with themselves. This automatically has a ripple effect onto other people outside. And the same with the Qigong. It's people finding them back to their own body they change and this changes people around them. So this is the big picture to speak to, just help people find back to themselves and not to be uh, consumed by all this external, these external distractions, which most of us are very easily misled by. 100%, 100% and I think that's a beautiful message. Um, before, uh, before we finish, Nick, I just wanted to ask something that I you know, if if is there any little tip that you could, we could take away that if you were to do a little acupuncture on yourself, maybe not chop, put a needle in there yourself, but you know, is there any point that you could touch on your body or anything that you could take away that could be a stress reliever or something like that that you know the audience can take away to just put into practice? Yeah. So, for example, if you feel very stressed and you feel a lot of pressure rushing into your head, you could maybe take the uh, palms your hands and, and press them into your eyeballs okay you know, just for like uh, five or ten seconds and just relax and, you, and this this actually takes the pressure out of the body for example or if you have indigestion problems you could just massage this point here right so you can just massage this point here yeah this helps you with indigestion okay of course um i always always tell a lot of my patients just sit down at the edge of your chair put your hands on your knees straight back close your eyes and just breathe now let thoughts come and go just listen to yourself a little bit uh, uh, your body is always like we have all these organs in our body so this is a Taoist um, picture the Taoists see all our organs as a big family right we're like in a big family and our body contains a big family of organs and they're all crying for attention, they all have their own issues. So we should really listen inside and, and be like, hey, what do they want to tell us? You know, if we don't listen to them, then we end up having more emotional problems, more mental problems, more physical pain. So this, that's really a very basic practice. Just sit down, relax, listen to what's going on inside. Amazing. Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been amazing talking to you as always. 
uh, very inspiring, very um, enlightening, and it's always lovely to learn something new and, and to share that with the audience, you know. Um, Nick, where can people find you? I'm going to put the links below, but, you know, where, where can people find you? Yes, yeah, so I am situated north of Frankfurt in Bad Homburg. Yeah. I have a practice here. I also do uh, Zoom lessons, like for Qigong now. Yeah. Not, of course, not that acupuncture, right, but for yeah. Qigong. Um, so people are actually uh, calling me, or I call them over Zoom, and we do Qigong sessions like this also. So you can just visit me on my website, haverkamp.health, and there you have all the information. Amazing. Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been fantastic talking to you, and um, I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your sharing and, um, and telling us everything about acupuncture that we needed to know. Uh, yes, thank you very much, James. Thanks for having me. Huge thanks and huge appreciation for you. Um, thanks, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Nick is our super soul model this week. And um, if you want to find any of his links, I'll have them below. So if you want to type to Nick, please find him on uh, the links below and have any questions and if you want to get in touch with him. Um, but for now, as always, thanks for tuning in and I wish you green lights all the way. <laughs>